Welcome to Living in Santa Barbara. I'm your host, Kathy Henry, and today I'm excited to continue my series on the best Mexican restaurants in town by featuring the talented and hardworking Chef Manny from Azul Cocina. This restaurant brings a fresh, refined twist to Mexican cuisine where every dish is crafted with the finest ingredients. Chef Manny began his career when he was 16, starting as a humble dishwasher, but quickly rising to become an executive chef in French cuisine. This rich background adds a unique flair to his Mexican recipes. His dishes are derived from passion and creativity, inspired by his travels to places like Singapore, where he sharpened his skills and deepened his culinary expertise. With its beautifully crafted dishes, creative cocktails, gorgeous ambiance, and Chef Manny's humble yet passionate approach to cooking, Azul Cocina is a must-visit. Join us as we hear the story behind this special restaurant and discover why it's one of my top recommendations in Santa Barbara. Please join me in welcoming Chef Manny Diaz to the show. Hi, Manny. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. You're this welcome. is my first time I'm doing this. You know? Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's kind of my first time, too. I just started yeah, podcasting. I've been doing, uh, you know, with social media for, you know, promotions for, you know, cooking with, make videos with food and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. but you know, it's, it's good to do this. Yeah, yeah. First time for everything. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason why I wanted to have you on the show is I, you know, I come here, I'm a regular here. You are. And I enjoy your cooking. And in fact, yeah. sometimes I think that you have Michelin star potential. Has well, anybody told you that? Yeah. Yes, but, uh, well, you know, I know there's a lot of Michelins out there. I mean, that, that some people they don't recognize that, you know, there is a lot of great chef mm-hmm. like you know silent chefs you know yeah and but you know i think uh as long as you like what to do mm-hmm. what you do with it you know you're gonna do it right yeah yes my life has been since i was 16 years old yeah you want to tell us about how yeah you... yeah well, i started washing dishes just like a lot of chefs you know and i Few months washing dishes, then prep cook, and then uh, was working with the French chefs back then. And uh, where were you? Uh, Assistant Lee. There was a like a, a club in uh, uh, Hollywood. Okay. Um, about, there was like a you know like, Celia Montecito Club, you know some yeah private club. And there was this restaurant inside with French chefs working there, and I started washing dishes there. Mm-hmm. They like the way I prep and everything, and then from there, life school, like all life school, and I never went to culinary school. Mm-hmm. But I was learning from a lot of different chefs. Now I teach other dishwashers. Like here I have uh, two dishwashers, and now they are line cook, oh, yeah. just like my. The, yeah. the way I start. Yeah. And, you know, I more by them. You know, some guys, they call me sometimes and I say, uh, Chef, thank you so much to teach me, you know. Mm-hmm. All I know, you know, is because you teach me. I'm, I'm a chef right now in this restaurant. I say, mm-hmm. what? I say, I never saw that, that I helped you that way, you know. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's like something that and you don't get price for that, you know. Yeah. That's my reward. Mm-hmm. You know, and I never stop. I keep going and going and, you know, restaurant is, is very tough. Yeah. Very, very tough. Uh, I don't think I can do it because, yeah. I mean, long hours and especially when you have the responsibility for good or bad, you know, you had to be on the front and, you know, mm-hmm. put your face on the your signature on the dishes. Yeah. It's a huge thing. Yeah. But, you know, and then people, the customers like you, you know, they're, they're, they're are the the best critics, you know. They're, they're saying, I like this food, I'm coming back, and I'm here. Mm-hmm. And that's my reward. Yeah. For my for me and for my my other chefs, you know. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I wanted to talk to you because I want to highlight my favorite restaurants in Santa Barbara, and you're yeah. definitely one of them. Uh, you can tell in your dishes that it has kind of a there's it, it's an art, and there's a there's a subtlety in your flavors 
there's a delicacy in the, it's not just regular Mexican food. I can tell that you do have that French influence in your cooking. Yeah, well, you know, see, I'm, I'm from Mexico, mm-hmm. from uh, Durango, Mexico. And since I was a little kid, I used to go to the the creeks and fishing myself, bring mm-hmm. the fish to my mom and cook it myself with my mom. And, you know, mm-hmm. she was making tortillas and I like to help my mom. Yeah. And so I came here and I started learning different like French techniques. Mm-hmm. And I kind of liked uh, to combine all that, you know. Yeah. Then uh, uh, years ago, I mean, when I was uh, in uh, downtown LA as a security chef, I had the opportunity to uh, went to uh, Singapore. Mm-hmm. I was there for like two weeks. We did a menu for four season. Mm-hmm. There is a total different. It's another culture, you know. Yeah. Indonesia, India, I mean, Singapore, mm-hmm. England. You know, that's England colony, but so many. Beautiful ingredients there. We take the time to go in a, a lot of different restaurants, my boss and I, and, and experiment ourselves, you know. Taste everything? Yeah. Mm-hmm. On my way back, I think I said, you know, I had to, like, the the war is so beautiful. I mean, like, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the food put the people together. Yeah. So when I started doing my own, uh, my own creation, like uh, Pacific Rio downtown. Mm-hmm. I call it Mexican Asian infusion. Mm-hmm. I start doing like a carne asada with you know little duck noodles with uh, uh, cranberries, mm-hmm. spicy duck taquitos. You no, know, mm-hmm. uh, and then never stop. Like it's like the guitar. More you play, more you find songs, new songs. Yeah, same as the food. Mm-hmm. Here in Santa Barbara, before we came here, I start uh, looking around what's what is uh, different than my uh, creation. Yeah. Say I want to. I don't want to do anything the same. Mm-hmm. There has to be a difference. That's why I came here with a modern Mexican. Mm-hmm. But the two is contemporary, you know, mm-hmm. using a. Uh, all local, like, produce and Yeah, I was going to ask you, it's farm to table? Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. farm, farm to table. I have this company here, and I tell them, you know, whatever is local. Let's say, like, to, yesterday I have the baby zucchini local. Bring it here, so I mm-hmm. bring it. Yeah. So, you know. Figure out something to do with it? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna see, for the dishes, for a special fish, I put them in there. Mm-hmm. I have uh, the halibut, let's say. At this, what a Mexican restaurant has like this type of fish. Mm-hmm. So, and I teach my servers also how to sell specials. I don't know you. You know you've been here as a regular. Yeah. And uh, every time they tell you what we have for special. Mm-hmm. And a Mexican restaurants traditional, you don't see this stuff like that. Yeah. So I say, you know, okay, this is not a French restaurant. Mm-hmm. It's a Mexican restaurant, but uh, we have specials like. Sifu paella, mm-hmm. uh, special fish of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we run in the holiday with uh, black lentils, French lentils with yeah. a arugula, cucumber, mm-hmm. garlic vinaigrette, and avo- avocado sauce. Mm-hmm. So that's the it's a Mexican, French, and local. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a restaurant for a foodie like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's... Uh, it's every day. So what I'm going to do for this week as a special. So I start creating my own ideas. So, well, it is kind of fun, right? It's your art. It is. Just... It is. Like the lamb barbacoa. See, the, the, the style is from, um, from Oaxaca, Mexico. Okay. For, for me, Oaxaca, Mexico is, is for I think for most of the chefs, the more famous chefs, Oaxaca is the inspiration for a Mexican food. Mm. Is Oaxaca, is it the barbacoa? Barbacoa, yeah, yeah, they do. The, That's the, from Oaxaca. The, they call michiote, so they, it's a pre-Hispanic food. Mm-hmm. We make it with a shiote, avocado leaves, and we, we, 
we brine it first and then we cook it for like four or five hours. Mm -hmm. And it's so tender, we use the, the lamb chain. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's not tender meat, but mm -hmm. you had to work with that. Yeah. Brine it and then cook slow it. Slow cook and it. And slow cook it and then use all the juice and same goodness there. Sounds amazing. Yeah. So, and, uh, and it's not even in the menu. And uh, every day we have a lamb barbacoa. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sometimes uh, customers say, oh, do you have barbacoa today? Yeah, we have barbacoa. Oh, today we run out. Oh, no, I'm coming back again. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it makes you feel good, you know. Mm -hmm. Not even in the menu. Well, so let's go back to all the restaurants that you worked at. And then you were you were in Orange County. I think that was the last place that you... That, that was your... Yeah, my uh, our, our first restaurant was... Um, my wife and I, we opened a, a bistro provincia in um, uh, Covina. Okay. San Gabriel Valley. I don't, I don't know if you the, know the area there. Mm-hmm. This was Covina and Covina. The restaurant was in Covina. But wait, so before that, what made you decide to jump from? So you went from dishwasher okay, yes. to prep, from dishwasher to prep, and then and then line cook, and then um, a sous chef. Okay. Then uh, the we moved to another restaurant. My first restaurant was like for maybe a year. Uh huh. My first place as a sous chef. Uh, as a dishwasher, I started. One year, then I finished as a line cook. Then the chefs moved to another restaurant, and they opened. There was two chefs, John and Alex, French mm -hmm. people, nice people. Uh, they moved to another restaurant, and um, they, I, I would take the position as a sous chef. And they offered that to you. Yeah, they offered me that, and then say, you know, hey, great. That's nice. Yeah, huh? I mean. Talking, uh, when the minimum wage was uh three fifty an hour. Wow! Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. Uh huh. But for me, it was a, I mean, like big challenge. I was so excited. Oh, I'm a sous chef now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, now that I know, I say you know, I wasn't ready for a sous chef. You weren't ready. I, I say I, I need more. I need to know more. I said, when I become a chef, when I open the walking cooler and. And uh, create a, a a menu from what's in there. Mm -hmm. Then I did that to myself. I say I, I open the walking cooler. I create a appetizer, an entree, and dessert. Say now I'm a chef. Mm -hmm. I know how to cut fish. I know how to cut chicken, mm -hmm. uh, bistro chicken, airline chicken. Uh, you name it. I can do it. I'm a, I'm a chef now. Mm -hmm. I know how to come with uh, ideas, like make sauces for, learn about wines, you know. Mm -hmm. So those two chefs left, and I I took the position as an executive chef in wow. a French restaurant. Wow. Yeah. And the age of uh, 19 years old. Wow, you've been mm -hmm. a chef since 19. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and I, I didn't stop there. So I moved to another restaurant as a chef. And I say, you know, I, I had to open my own. I'm, I, I can do it. Mm -hmm. and then went to Singapore. The way back to, from Singapore, I start thinking when I open my own restaurant. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I, my wife, she was working for a bank, and I told them about my ideas. I say, okay, I I help you. And yeah, we opened that little bistro together. For five years. Did you, was that with your own money that you did that? Yes. Wow. Yeah. And my family helped me, you know, like here and there. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it was rent, not to, you know, not, not to, not like now, not not like Santa Barbara here, the mm -hmm. location. This was the one in Covina. The one in Covina. And what location, was it called? Uh, Bistro Provincia. Yeah. Yeah. Location was okay. We were in, like in the main street there. The, we don't have view. There was a, tell you the truth, was our, our view was a, there's more Tuari there. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's funny. That's but, crazy. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. But uh, I mean, that bistro, people like the the people from uh, South Hills, that the people, with the, you know, with the money. Yeah. More ink, you know, than others. 
they all get together. They, they used to go there at Bistro because we have the best wines in town. The, mm-hmm. I mean, the food, the, the love, the food, different. I, yeah, well, I mean, it seems unique for West Covina. I mean, I don't think West Covina, are they known for having restaurants like that? No, no. Yeah. They have more like Mexican traditional yeah. restaurants, like American, you know, uh-huh. chain, like chain restaurants. Yes. But not like uh, we were, we started with the, the tablecloths and style and, and wine specials and, you know, we start with the, with beer and wine. Mm-hmm. Then later, after a few months, we, we apply for the liquor license for the 47. Mm-hmm. So we got the 47, the full liquor. Mm-hmm. But it's very tiny bar, little, like, smaller than this right behind. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, martinis and good wines. Yeah. Then I came with the idea we do do wine dinner, wine pairing dinner. Yes. And people love that. Yeah. For five years, we, we did a lot. We did, a, like, every three months mm-hmm. different wines we even bring uh winemakers from uh, uh santa barbara mm-hmm. napa and for each event like that depends on the wine we bring the the music like so today we have you know italian wines with italian food mm-hmm. italian music and french gets french music you know mm-hmm. and uh so that wasn't a Mexican restaurant then? No, it was just, no. Okay. I call more like uh, French, uh, Italian more. Mm-hmm. The only dish I have there for like Mexican it was like uh, sh- shrimp chili relleno. Okay. It was like an appetizer. Yeah. And uh, I have the, the chicken lumpia, chicken curry lumpia, and bistro chicken. Mm-hmm. And, Lamb shops, you know, mm-hmm. shots of Raya, you know, like. Yeah, that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. But then again, uh, the specials, some of the specials I put my uh, my Mexican touch in there and, mm-hmm. and the play. Then here is different, a little different, but it's still the the the, the fusion there, you know. Mm-hmm. You see and you, every dish is different. Yeah. So how did you go from West Covina to... Here, like, what did you? Um, we finished the lease in Covina okay. five, five years. Then we moved uh, to um, Dana Point. You didn't want to stay in West Covina? No, I mean, it, it was. I mean, we did good for five mm-hmm. years, but um, they increased the rent. Oh yeah, they always do. Yeah, they, <laughs> cre- they increased the rent, and we, you know, my wife and I, we saw more like more potential. And and uh, different area. Actually, we we lease a restaurant in Newport Beach first before Dana Point. Okay. We did a lease there, and uh, we just, I mean, lost everything because the it was the landlord that was this old couple. Um, mm-hmm. They have two kids, and um, we we signed the lease and everything, and they don't want to deal anymore because that uh, they're landlords pass away yeah like a week from each other oh you're kidding yeah yeah so the the kids you know with the money and everything they don't want to deal with them and that make me like lose the lease and 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 everything all the investment wow we put them there yeah Uh, it was a like huge huge um you know, we lost a lot of money there. But, yeah, I'm sorry. But uh, big lesson, though, huh? But, yeah, yeah. Economy talking is, is terrible, but uh, then you know, we didn't stop there. Mm-hmm. I say, you know what? Uh, I I saw this uh, opportunity in Dana Point, and I was my my friend. He was a real estate agent. He helped me to take that yeah. place in Dana Point. Mm-hmm. It was all. Furniture, like in the kitchen, they have everything. Yes, there used to be another like bistro there. Mm-hmm. So we open, you know, I, I, I have my all, all my furniture, and I, uh, I have the license for you know for liquor. So there's a big, big uh, help right there because mm-hmm. just to get the liquor licenses. Yes, it's a big thing to yeah. to, to do. Is that transferable from? It's only. Like here in Santa Barbara, you 
You uh, can't bring that like the no, license here, right? Uh, no, it's, there is, you know, you had to transfer from LA to Orange County. You can do that. You can do that. Okay. But you had to, you had to apply. You had to, you know, I will win the lottery. You know, there's a lottery um, they do every year for liquor license. Mm -hmm. So we won the lottery for Orange County license, mm -hmm. and we started like that. And, uh, and how did that go? How long were you there? A year. Oh, only a year. Only a year. Why? Yeah. The pandemic came. Oh yeah. And I was like. You know, from uh, to see all the all you work, you and your family, my wife and I, uh -huh. and uh, to see all that collapse. Mm -hmm. Like one day you open, then next day everything was closed. Yes, feels uh, it's feel really really sad. Yes, I mean you. You cry and I say, "What is this?" You know, crazy. But hey, mm -hmm. it's not. It's not. It's not your fault. It's not mm -hmm. nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You do close everything. It's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. Million, millions of people lost their yeah. job, the business. Mm -hmm. I was one of them. You know, and so yeah, I mean. So how did you go from there to Santa Barbara? Did you want to move to Santa Barbara? Did you? We always would like to move to Santa Barbara. You always saw before, it? yeah. Okay. Um, actually, uh, our my wife and I we used to come here with my kids when we were little mm -hmm. to the beach and ride the bikes and mm -hmm. I have a family here in, in Santa Barbara. Oh, good. My sister and um, but I mean Santa Barbara just, just want to just live here, you know, cause, cause it's a good place the, to the, live. The ambience, good place to live, you know. Uh -huh. it's, it's not a lot of traffic like there, you know. Mm -hmm. There is just so much traffic just to go to a place another just took you it, with the traffic. Yeah. So that's crazy. I always say everything here is 15 minutes away. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was for 14 years I was just driving from, like, from um, Glendora to downtown LA. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then 15. that's the worst traffic right there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was in the morning, early in the morning. 14 years. Yeah. I, I got just tired. You don't miss that. Say, how, how many hours of my life are you left in the freeway? But it's a good it's a good time to listen to a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's been my, my life yeah. in this uh, industry. Uh -huh. You know, but uh, yeah, after Kobe, after Kobe, I, there was um, this these people. They want to. Um, Is that Edgar? No, I meet Edgar there. Where, uh, in, in Orange in, County. In, in Orange County, Edgar and I become good friends because he was a client there. Oh, he okay. used to go there and and he used to follow me. And you know, when every time I do my cooking videos and social media, he he always follow me. Oh, okay. And, uh, Does he live in Orange County? Yeah, he lives in Orange County. Okay. So he um. He came uh, one day and uh, he was sitting in the bar. He's him and his wife. Mm -hmm. Edgar is, by the way, he's the co-owner. He's a co-owner, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, our partner. Yeah. So Edgar and Lupe, they, they went there and he uh, he came and see, he asked for Chopino. Uh huh. And uh, the partner said, "I don't have Chopino." And uh, tell the chef, "I want uh, if he can do Chopino for me." Oh yeah. I make a shopping for him. He was so happy. And uh -huh. So he asked, tell the chef what uh, he drink. So the bartender say, he drinks just uh, red wine. Okay, give him a glass of wine. What kind of wine? So that's how I meet that with Chopino and a, and a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's not Italian. Uh, no, no, he's a, he's a mess. He's from Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. He owns some restaurants in Orange County. But... Uh -huh. So we talk about, have a, Business together. He liked my concert. And, and uh, became good friends, him and his wife and my wife. And a uh, good relationship. So I say, you know, let's open this together. We In open. Santa Barbara? Yeah, Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. I found this location and I told him, let's take a look at this place. It's nice. Especially the patio is beautiful. Yes. So we came and we both like it and uh, 
it took a while to open. Yeah, why was that? Why did it take? It's just, a year? Uh, I mean, the ADA compliance and the bathrooms. But it was already a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. That's, but uh, the city asked for new. You know, they say there's a new codes, and the, the, there were before the the other owners owners here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they never fixed those little things, and we do the lease and we pay the consequences for that. Yeah. So we had to hire a, an architect and do another plan for the bathrooms and make it bigger for the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. It took a year, almost a year. So for a bathroom, for bathrooms. So we're talking about almost two years to open this place. Wow, it's a lot. Yes. So, not easy at all. Mm-hmm. But here we are. Yeah. You know, a step at a time, you know. Mm-hmm. And never stop. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as we can good help and positive mind, and mm-hmm. we're going to continue doing this. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been open now? Nine months. Mm hmm. And Name how's that going? Uh, is it's it, going. It's this going, is building. It's, it's, it's building is is going good. You know, for for being new a restaurant. Mm-hmm. I think uh, even the the economy is not too good right now. You know, and stuff like that. But uh, but people has to eat and they like to go out and like to you know explore new places. Mm-hmm. And we're new and people we had regulars. Yeah, uh, you know, in nine months we have a lot of regulars, just just like yourself. And well, we have a lot of restaurants here. In Santa yeah, Arba, it's a lot of restaurants, but there's only a handful that are more refined, like your restaurant. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. And you know, we we had the potential to do um, a lot of uh, events here. You know, there's the courthouse is right here, and um, and the theaters, the theaters, so. Every time it has a concert or something, people, you know, stop here and have a drink or eat and then go back to a show or something. It's a mad rush, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we uh, we have like a, a lot of uh, reservations already for, for events, like mm-hmm. for weddings. Okay. People buy out the patio and uh, the private room together mm-hmm. for private events. And and that, that's, uh, I mean, it's a huge help for for the, for the numbers yes and besides the regular so and like i say it's just it's a lot of work mm-hmm. uh, but this is what you what you do for a living yes so that what makes your what makes your restaurant different is just the the type of mexican food it's not i wouldn't it is mexican but it's like it kind of reminds me of when i go to barcelona or something like that yeah well that's yeah that's another influence too you know because I, as a chef, you know, we never stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, uh, you know, creation's always on your mind. Like, you know, how how I come with the paella. Mm-hmm. There was this uh, wedding, the one uh, Spanish food. And my wife told you know, but this is uh, modern Mexican. See? So I can't say, you know what, what do you want? Uh, you know, like paella, pinchos, pinchos, the, the, you know, the... The skewers of mm-hmm. octopus and stuff like that. And in Spain, they call pinchos. That's like appetizer from, you know, from the uh, street food, you know. Yeah. Say, so, no problem. You want pinchos? You want paella? No problem. Yeah. Uh, you can do it. Yes. I mean, that's, this is what I do. Mm-hmm. You know how to do different types uh, of foods. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that I... In the bistro, I have paella. I say, mm-hmm. okay. I did the paella for them. I was very happy. And mm-hmm. uh, patatas brava, Spanish dish, and uh, to put pinchos. And, and I, I buy the little uh, paella pens. And uh, mm-hmm. so I told my chefs, I said, you know, we, we have the paella pens. Wait, let's get some uh, special paella. Yeah. So now it's, paella is. On the menu, it's, it's in the specials okay. uh, every day. But see, last, last night was low, and we saw like maybe five, six paellas last night. Mm-hmm. Weekends, we saw a lot of paellas. Yeah, and uh, how the idea came was thanks to the wedding, the one mm-hmm. paella. 
Yeah. <laughs> Do you get a chance to go eat out in Santa Barbara to some of the other restaurants? Yeah. I uh, I went to, I mean, uh, close here, Bouchon, mm -hmm. Olio Limone, Loquita, mm -hmm. uh, The Lark. I, you know, a lot of restaurants. What are, what's your favorite? Uh, I, I love food, but uh, I mean, so, uh, I count the service too. Mm -hmm. Service. Food, yeah, it's interesting to food. Food and service for me is it has it goes it has to go together. I agree. Because you have a great food and bad service, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as your first time, uh, you know, what a bad service is. Mm -hmm. It's hard, I mean, especially at the beginning here. We we. We work a lot on that, and, and every day we're still working on the service and mm -hmm. and everything. You know, but some, you, pe it, some people they don't really understand what services should. When you're in New York or Las Vegas or certain restaurants, yeah. even in Los Angeles, actually it's gone downhill. Mm -hmm. But this the service level is really yeah. important. It's it's we're kind of losing that. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's true. It's yeah. true. I, I come from the from the you know. The, the old school. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a chef, I have a part time as a food runner and buser, mm -hmm. like two three nights. Yeah, and uh, there was a service. That restaurant had when the the best service and in, in Sagat, the magazine Sagat. Mm -hmm. and we were the best. Which restaurant was uh, that? Uh, L.A. Nicola. Oh, Nicola. Yeah. Nicola. So that restaurant. I mean, that was a service. Mm -hmm. Most all the restaurants focus on service, food and service. Mm -hmm. There was the time when people smoke inside the restaurant. Mm -hmm. They had the ash cream, change the ash cream, like every time, refill water, refill coffee, and mm -hmm. clean the table clocks. You know, yeah. like, fold the napkin and put fold it Fold and I can fold it. You know, I mean, that was service. Yeah. And you're right. It's losing that you know. Mm hmm they come, you know, like more, more fast. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Or the food all comes at once. Yeah, the food all comes at once, and I, I try to encourage my my uh, staff here. You know, my wife and I say, I came from these times, mm -hmm. old school. Yeah, let's 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 get something from here. You know, because people like to. I mean, I go to a restaurant, and the experience start when the they receive you mm -hmm. and the door say welcome thank you for coming and everything started right there mm -hmm. and but you go to a restaurant and, you know they don't you know, you don't feel like welcome or something mm -hmm. and they uh, you sit them at the table they don't they don't even bring water or offer you water or something to drink mm -hmm. I mean you start as oh you know what and then when it started like that, it's, it's, it's not a good service, not a good sign. Yeah. Sometimes the food is good, but the service is bad, you know. You might give them another chance. Mm -hmm. But uh, you need to work a lot with the service. Yeah. A lot. A lot of training. A lot of training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here we're still, you know, we, we're still working every day. Yeah. With, with the service. Yeah. And we're getting there. We're mm -hmm. getting there. But, uh, yeah. Was... Are you doing a good job? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We're still working hard, you know, and along with my with my chefs, mm -hmm. we're all yeah, a team. And uh, I thank God for that. Yeah, I I recommend everybody come to Mr. Cocina. <laughs> we're gonna do uh, um, oh. uh, events, yeah, uh, like a wine wine pairing dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, that's gonna be on um, uh, late September. Okay. Our first wine dinner in Azul is going to be wine from Valle de Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. It's oh, going okay. to be six course meal. Yeah, and uh, in those events you you can see the 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 creation of, of the dishes. And then the next one is going to be uh, wines from uh, Bilton, mm -hmm. uh, local wines. Yeah. So and like we're going to work and uh, uh, to do the schedule for wine events for the whole year. Okay, got it. And what days are you open? And are you open every? Uh... We open every day, every day. Mm -hmm. We open um, from uh, Monday to Thursday uh, to Thursday, eleven a.m. to nine mm -hmm. p.m. And Fridays and Saturdays we close at ten o'clock. 
Okay, and you do brunch too? Brunch, we do 10, uh, 10 a.m. Saturdays and Sunday. Got it. Yeah. And what's your address here? 7 East, Anapamu, uh -huh. the street, Santa Barbara. And it's the, what's the website? The website, azulcocina.com. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. I'm actually crossing my fingers that Michelin comes in here and you get a star, because I think oh. you deserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, for, yeah. for inviting me to do this, and uh, I, yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Bye -bye. That wraps up today's episode on Azul Cocina, a standout in Santa Barbara's restaurant scene. If you're looking to experience refined Mexican cuisine with a creative twist, Azul Cocina should be at the top of your list. The restaurant is located at 7 West Anapamu in downtown Santa Barbara, and they're open seven days a week. Please visit azulcocinasb.com. That's A-Z-U-L-C-O-C-I-N-A-S-B.com. To learn more about the restaurant, check out their menu or make a reservation. Thanks for listening. And if you like this episode, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a rating on the podcast page. Your support helps me share the best of Santa Barbara with you. Thank you.